swinging a miss, strike three. Deep to center field, and this ball's crushed. We welcome you to downtown Houston, where tonight inside Minute Maid Park, the Houston Astros play the middle game of their nine-game homestand, game two between the White Sox and the Astros from Minute Maid Park. The Astros so far 4-0 and on this homestand with a win last night, 3-1 to over the White Sox, first time they beat Chicago all season long. Looking at the best records in the American League, the Cleveland Indians lead the Astros by a game and a half. Boston is seven games back. Both the Indians and Astros have already wrapped up their divisions. The Red Sox now two and a half ahead of the Yankees. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Todd Callis alongside Jeff Blum. Glad you could join us for another night of Astros baseball. Blummer, all year long, it's been the Astros team on the road that has gotten the job done. Lately, they've been playing really good baseball at home. It's kind of interesting. They come off that road trip or what the extended road trip, 18 of 21 days on the road. They are very happy to be back, and they're playing extremely well here. When you get good pitching, that really sets the tone, and that's been the case lately. Yeah, Brad Peacock has been the guy in the last five starts. You're checking out some numbers, those 30 innings pitch, the 1.50 ERA. For a guy who did, did not do well coming out of spring training, pitched out of that bullpen, he has been extremely well. But it's also been Dallas Keuchel, Justin Verlander, Charlie Morton. There's going to be some decisions down the road here in the next couple of weeks that A.J. Hinch is going to try and figure out who's going to be in that postseason rotation because Colin McHugh looked pretty good last night, too. Astro starters trying to win six straight games for the first time in a dozen years. And Brad Peacock kind of got the train rolling as he has been really good in his last few starts. Yeah, these are Brad Peacock's last five starts. A 1.91 ERA. This is the guy that we didn't know was going to make that team out of spring training. When he did, he was a bullpen source, figured out that slider, pitching out of the stretch position. One of the things he's talked about mostly is being healthy down the stretch. That's really proven to be his worth. The fastball early in the count for strikes, and that slider to break off for punch outs. Peacock on the mound tonight for the Astros against the veteran for the White Sox, James Shields. The Astros look to continue their home winning streak. Streak so long, it actually started back at Tropicana Field. We'll have more after this.
Sportsnet is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Baseball right around the corner. When we come back, Julie Morales will talk about pitching coach Brent Strom and the starters looking ahead to the postseason. Fires in the middle of the season when we were really struggling. He really won a lot of big games for us when we could have gone either way. And once we got our big lead, guys stepped up, and uh, it's just been a great season for us. You know, I get emotional the older I get. These kind of things I know don't happen very often. So if I look like I'm tearing up, it's because I am. And uh, some of the guys came up to me and said, Strom, are you okay? I, I was emotional because I love these guys, and they've done a great job. Nobody works harder than that man. Brent Strom, the pitching coach, talking about all these guys who stepped up this year when injuries really took a toll on that starting rotation. Four out of five of the rotation were on the DL at some point. That doesn't include Colin McHugh. So as he mentioned, Brad Peacock, the starting pitcher today, as one of those guys who really stepped up this year, started the year in the bullpen. And these two have been working together since 2014. But Peacock pitching so well that now he could find himself pitching in a postseason game. Come a long way in the few years that he's been with the Houston Astros. but. Who else would be in that postseason rotation? There's Dallas Keuchel, there's Justin, Justin Verlander, but then after that, Charlie Morton, Peacock, as we mentioned, Lance McCullers Jr., Colin McHugh. These are some tough decisions, as Blummer was just talking about, that A.J. Hinge and his staff are going to have to make on who is going to take the mound in some of these playoff games. An exciting time for this club and some Really great options, guys, for AJ and company as he tries to work through this, as he watches these guys each time they go out. Matchups certainly will come into play, but it all starts with this guy on the mound right now. And when you're talking about great stories of 2017 and, and where this guy's come from, where he is now, and the confidence that the entire organization has now when he steps out onto the mound. TK. Yeah, you're right. Right at the top of the list in terms of the best stories of the year in 2017, Blummer, this guy has been as reliable as anybody. It's been incredible. Incredible. He simplified the mechanics, pitching out of the stretch for most of the season, worked his way into that bullpen. He eventually worked himself into A.J.'s favor, being one of the go-tos out of that bullpen. And then the injuries throughout the course of the season to that rotation kind of forced the hand for Mike Fires to be in there consistently and Brad Peacock, and he has really spread his wings. He will face the following lineup for Rick Renteria and the Chicago White Sox. 
Yomer Sanchez will lead things off at third base, followed by Yoan Moncada. Jose Abreu is the first baseman. Nicky Delmonico, cleanup hitter in left field. Avisiel Garcia is in right. Omar Navarez gets a start behind the plate. Tim Anderson is a shortstop batting seventh. Matt Davidson is the DH and hits eighth. And Adam Engel is in center field and bats ninth. It's funny with the name Peacock and your allude alluding to him spreading his wings. He's about as humble as they come. There is no show when it comes to Brad Peacock. It's almost like the name doesn't fit the animal that he's. I know you really expect him to, you know, have those feathers up and bowed up and carrying his luggage around because he's been so good all year long. He's earned it. He really has. He has given the Astros a chance to win pretty much in every start as he delivers a strike to Yomer Sanchez. It's one and one. Done a better job controlling the walks as the season has gone along. Been good all year long limiting home runs. There's that slider that he tries to break over on the outside corner. Home plate umpire Jordan Baker said it missed the corner. It's two and one. Astros and White Sox for the fourth time this year. The Astros finally beat the White Sox last night for the first time. Team with the worst record in the American League swept the Astros in a series up in Chicago earlier this season. Last night, the Astros getting one back with a 3 1 victory. That is a strike on the corner. Sanchez thought it might have been off. Peacock has been just missing slightly on the arm side in the first batter of this game. Felt like that's how Brad was last time out against Los Angeles. Just kind of nibbling on the edges. Didn't have his pinpoint command that we've become accustomed to. He had three walks in that game, only three punch outs, but still, even without his best, most masterful stuff, still went six innings strong. Full count to the first batter he faces. Sanchez fouling off another pitch. This is the area that A.J. Hinch felt like the Astros lost the battle the first time through against the White Sox. Three two counts. There are 18 of them against the White Sox up in Chicago. And the White Sox went six for 12 in those 18 three two counts and also drew six walks. Off the glove of Peacock recovers fires Sanchez retired for the first out of the game. Well, Peacock makes the first defensive play see who he has behind him tonight in the outfield you'll see Derek Fisher in left Cameron Maven patrol center field George Springer has a DH day Josh Reddick is in right no Alex Bregman either on the field tonight as Marvin Gonzalez will play third Carlos Correa and Jose Altuve up the middle. And Yuli Gurriel at first base with Evan Gaddis getting a start behind the plate. Here's Yoan Moncada. Astros have had trouble getting this 22 year old rookie out this year. He's 7 for 13 against them. And Peacock starts him off with a slider for a strike. Peacock had to come back in that at bat against Sanchez in the very first batter he faced. Since the All Star break, he's only walked one out of 59 leadoff hitters in an inning. And that's a big improvement from where he was early in the year when occasionally that walk would come up and bite him. It's one and two the count on Mancata. Back to the screen. One earned run or less in 10 of his last 15 starts, two earned runs or less in 12 of his last 15 starts. Peacock continues to pitch outstanding baseball. Pulled the string a little bit there on a 1 2 pitch and was able to get Mancata swinging. Did. Nice change up. And a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller lights. Brad going six innings in his last start. 
has averaged less than six innings in his last half dozen starts or so. Six is his longest outing in two of those six appearances. There's a slider for a strike. He's been able to get that slider over for a strike. Been consistent with it all year, but this is a good look on our matches firm Supermo of the changeup that he threw to get Yohan Moncada out. He has been a nuisance against Houston Astro pitching. That's a pitch he only throws to left handers about 6% of the time and a good time to throw it. Yeah, if he can add that to the fastball slider combo and occasional curve, <laughs> that's fun to watch. Peacock dotting up the zone after a struggle with the first batter got ahead of Mancata. One and two. Now he's ahead of the dangerous Jose Abreu. 0 oh and two. Tries that slider and it's a called third strike. It stays on the outside corner and freezes Abreu. Two strikeouts for Peacock and a one, two, three first. Presented by Southwest Airlines, George Springer gets a DH day. He is leading things off, followed by Josh Reddick with that 350 average at home this year. Jose Altuve hits third. Carlos Correa in the cleanup spot. Marwin Gonzalez over at third tonight, followed by Evan Gaddis, Yuli Gurriel, Derek Fisher, and Cameron Maven getting a start in center field. James Shields going for the Chicago White Sox, 35-year-old right-hander. He's making his 20th start of the season. 10th on the road this year. His numbers against Houston are pretty good on his career. He is 2 and 1 with a 1.70. Last five starts have been pretty good for James, going 2 and 2 with a 4.75. He's fallen victim of the home run here in the last two, three years. Shields facing the Astros for just the third time in the last five years as he faces George Springer and that's a new delivery for Shields that he began in early August. As he's now coming a little more crossfire sidearm. Yeah, you had mentioned before the game that he had dropped down a little bit. I didn't realize it would be that drastic and that far across his body. This is down low it's two and oh. But you really can't blame him for trying to reinvent the delivery considering some of the numbers he's given up. Last three years, nobody's allowed more home runs than Shields. 370 career starts. And now going with a new wrinkle in the middle of the season. As he delivers a strike to Springer, it's two and one. He started it in the middle of a game against the Boston Red Sox. August the 5th had allowed four runs in the first two innings. Things weren't going well. Hit hard, but at the second baseman, Moncada. And there's one out. Springer hit that 2 1 pitch hard, but he retired as we look at our league leaders presented by Houston Methodist. Jose Altuve, home batting average in 2014 was 366. Josh Reddick in the top five. Some freak numbers up there. Jeff Bagwell, monster year in 1994, did it again in 2000. 353. That was a mere 20 points less than he did in 1994. But Josh Reddick, 
Making a splash on the scene here at Minute Maid Park. Reddick also has good numbers against James Shields. Again, a little different version of Shields than he's been used to seeing, but his last five at bats against the 35 year old. He has a triple, a double, and two home runs. Pop foul. Third base side, playable. Sanchez in foul territory, puts it away. And there's two away. That will bring up. It's an early trip to Snap City for Josh. Yeah, he's not happy already. No, that was a fastball. I feel he, he thinks he should have crushed and he popped out on it. So, even though these guys have seen Shields before, it's a whole different version of Shields. So, it may take it at bat to get used to. Here's Jose Altuve. Didn't give us much of a chance to talk about him last night. He put the first pitch in play all four times. Four bats, four pitches, one for four. Takes a call strike. He was in a rush to get somewhere, wasn't he? He was trying to catch Yuli Gurriel for fewest <laughs> pitches per plate appearance this year. He really has a healthy lead in that category. There's a breaking ball for a strike, and it's 0-2 on Altuve. What's one of the interesting things about the Astros is that they are actually 29th in Major League Baseball as far as pitches per plate appearance at 3.78. Yet they are the best offense at 282. Breaking ball, slider gets Altuve swinging a nine pitch inning for James Shields. Ground ball, pop up and a strikeout. Presented by AT&T, and we are talking about Brad Peacock and that slider usage, 2014, 16, and 17. Gradually on the rise. 2016, he discovered it, used it quite a bit, but it was still getting hit around. But this is the season of the slider for Brad Peacock. He's done a very good job. I think what's helped him also is being able to locate his fastball early on. But he threw a nasty one to Jose Abreu to put him away. That is exactly where he wanted it against the slugger. It's been fun to watch Brad Peacock go out there consistently with that fastball and that slider to hold down opposing teams. He's been able to throw that, especially in that first inning for a strike to start the count. And then Abreu was anticipating a sweeper off the plate and it ended up catching the corner. Starts off Nicky Delmonico with a fastball away. Delmonico fouls the next pitch off. Peacock really credits Jordan Jankowski, who we saw briefly at the big league level for improving that slider. Slider has become a pitch that not only has moved him in the starting rotation but now made him a very serious candidate for the playoff rotation. Pitch misses inside it's two and one.
Monaco around the bun takes that slider on the outside corner. In the shift, only Marwin Gonzalez on the left side, and he's around shortstop. Now with two strikes, you would think Delmonico will forego the bunt. He does and fouls it away. When the Astros first saw Delmonico, it was just his seventh, eighth, and ninth games in the big leagues. He went five for 11 against them in that first series up in Chicago last night. They were able to shut him down in four at bats. Second straight leadoff hitter that Peacock has gone to a full count against. Renteria liking the at bats of this young 25 year old, putting him in the cleanup spot. See the eighth pitch of this plate appearance. On the ground, Altuve waits for it down to the knee. Makes the play. Peacock has retired the first four he has faced. Because Brad Peacock strikes out so many, currently fifth amongst pitchers with at least 100 innings and in strikeouts per nine, he ends up with high pitch counts that don't always allow him to go deep in the games. Three starts in September, he's gone five and a third, five and two thirds, and six. Last start only needed 97 pitches to get through six innings against the Angels. There's that good slider to start the sequence to a very good right hand hitter obviously El Garcia who swings and misses. It's not bad at all you get a swing like that early in the count. Garcia has been hitting well lately he is a very aggressive hitter. Nobody has swung at more first pitches the last month in baseball than obviously El Garcia he's down in the count 0 and 2. Brian McCann watching along with the bench coach Alex Cora and the skipper A.J. Hinch. Even when Brian's not behind the plate, he's studying, making sure he knows everything about these hitters for the next game or if he gets in there later tonight. There's that sweeping slider that misses off the plate. It's one and two. In with the fastball, it's two and two. Peacock's third career start against the White Sox, second this season. Went six and a third against them up in Chicago, only allowed one run. Swing and a miss. Good slider getting Garcia. Three strikeouts of the first five batters he has faced. It's a matter of time before you get a nasty slider from Brad Peacock just like that. One of the league's leading hitters taking some funky swings at some sliders early on against Brad Peacock. Two outs, base is empty, and Brad will face Omar Narvaez. Narvaez came on as a pinch hitter in last night's game and struck out against Ken Giles, part of his Ninth inning for his 32nd save. This one's hit well to left, and Fisher is there right in front of the warning track and puts it away. One, two, three inning for Peacock as we head to the bottom of the second.
No score here in our area recovering still from Hurricane Harvey, but several players from Puerto Rico have heavy hearts today, especially with Hurricane Maria moving through almost the entire island without power, and that includes uh, some family for Carlos Correa and some other guys still waiting to hear from family members to see just how they're doing through all that. Correa well, did get a chance to catch up with his grandmother uh, for just a second, but they're going to have to wait things out to see uh, some of the aftermath to see what's going on. But he would love to get his family over here uh, to safety as soon as he possibly can. Correa was actually young when Hurricane George went by or went through Puerto Rico in 1998. Remembers it very well. Remembers the sounds. Uh, lived in a, a little house at the time with a, a roof that blew completely off. Uh, so lots of scary memories for him. But these guys, uh, you know, we all kind of lived through it not that long ago, but these guys are going through it again. Lots of family members over there uh, for not just the Astros, but several players across the league. So thoughts and prayers with those over there, and we'll continue to update you on whatever we learn about their families, guys. Yeah, it's a tough day in the Astros clubhouse and in their dugout just with the uncertainty. There are a lot of uh, players, coaches trying to get a hold of family members and there just isn't a whole lot of communication coming out of there. So our thoughts are definitely with all those impacted in Puerto Rico and throughout the neighboring islands as Maria continues to traverse through that part of the world. It sucks. I'm over hurricanes. I'm tired of it affecting everybody that we know. I can't imagine what these guys are going through without the power of Puerto Rico and the ability to reach out to these people. They've just got to sit and wait. It's got to be tough. Well, Correa draws a walk Only for a few hours. Put those fears and thoughts aside and just focus on the game of baseball. But certainly there will be a lot of attempts to communicate with family and friends after this game as well. Marwin Gonzalez is the batter. Correa draws a walk from Shields. That's the first runner of the game. Brad Peacock retiring the first six he has faced, and Shields a 1 2 3 first. Marwin hitting 3 13 his last 13 games with nine RBIs. Marwin, for part of the year, had been above 300, currently sitting at 293. Would have to go. Gets 37 at bats the rest of the way to hit an even 300. He'd have to go 14 for 37. It's possible. Yeah, it's doable. 378 average for the last dozen games. Takes a pitch outside for a ball. It's 1 0. Five more to go at home, including tonight. Seven more on the road trip. Three in Texas and four in Boston. Astros try to win their ninth in a row at home, a winning streak that started when they weren't even home, all the way back in St. Petersburg, Florida, Tropicana Field, when they won that final game against the Rangers. Up the middle, base hit. Correa turns second. He'll hold up. Marvin Gonzalez, a base hit into center field, and the Astros have the first two runners on in the second inning. The Houston Astros have set up a website so that all fans can help raise much needed funds for Hurricane Harvey relief. Visit youcaring.com slash Astros Harvey to donate today. Two on, nobody out, and Evan Gaddis the batter. Gaddis showed signs in his last start going two for three. A couple of runs scored in an RBI. Takes a fastball from Shields for a strike. It's 0 1. Slider, it's 0-2. Started that right at the left pocket. 
of Evan Gannison swept it right across the plate. It's good to see Evan get the start the other day against Seattle and get a couple of knocks out of the way. So had a walk in that game. Gattis stays alive. That sidearm sweeping slider was the first pitch he tried. We mentioned it happened August 5th. Gave a four runs first two innings against the Red Sox. Then he was facing Eduardo Nunez, who was in his career 13 for 27 against Shields. Shields got to two strikes, runner on. He's like, never got this guy out in the past. <laughs> Might as well try something new. Threw him that sidearm slider. Had a crazy looking swing, and Shields has never gone back. It was over the top delivery since. Back through the middle. Mancata can't make the play. Around third comes Correa. He's going to score. RBI base hit for Evan Gaddis. And the Astros on the board, 1 0. That is the very definition of a seeing eye single. Off the bat, it sees its way past James Shields and then underneath the glove of Yohan Mancata. That was a great route by Carlos Correa. I was pretty surprised. I think McConnell was trying to figure out what he was going to do if he did catch it. And in doing so, didn't really extend to go get that baseball first and then make the decision. We've seen Mancada make some spectacular, flashy plays during the year. And that was one he probably was better served just trying to keep on the infield. Well, it's, yeah, that's what I feel like he was trying to think. If I catch this, who do I come up and try and get? As opposed to if I just catch this and keep Correa at third base, and I got the bases loaded. Here's Yuli Gurriel. Yuli takes a strike. It's one and one. Astros on the board first with that Gaddis RBI base hit. Third is two and one. Mentioned what Marwin needs, 14 for 37. He started that off with a base hit to get to 300 by the end of the year. Yuri would need to go 15 for 40. Starts tonight at 295. It's a very doable for both Guriel and Marwin to end up the season with a 300 average. Two one pitches fouled out of play. Talk so much about what the team needs to do. They have a chance to win the best record in the American League. They just clinched. They're putting up monster team offensive numbers. Don't forget, these guys understand that everything they do, even after this clinching game, everything they do the rest of the season will end up on the back of their baseball card. They want that thing to look good. And a three to start your batting average looks really good. In the air to left center field. Cutting across his angle, the center fielder makes the play. Marwin tags but bluffs. Ball hung in the air a little bit, allowed Angle to get under it for the first out. It's also nice when your agent slides that piece of paper across the, the table and it has a three next to that batting average. It kind of helps out your cause a little bit, a couple extra dollars. Yuli is, is pleased. He'll be happy to hit 300 for sure, but he's pleased there's advanced analytics because there's a lot of numbers about well hit baseballs yep. that are in his favor. There are some that say he's the best in terms of well hit baseballs on the year in terms of percentage of his at bats. It's a great point. He is consistently hitting rockets throughout the course of this season. And consistently the Pena has been solid. Yeah, can you take that to the table? Yes. Oh man. I can... had a couple of extra years on my career if I could have done that. <laughs> Only well, you knew back or then. Or maybe that's why I did get a couple extra years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, the, we've showed it at various points this season. It he's got the he's got the strong hair game. You went with variety. Yeah, well, I had to to distract from my lack of talent. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> they needed to have a Blummer wig like they had a Yuli wig this year. If only there was social media when I played. Damn. Wrong era, Blummer. I know. It's all right, I get to sit here and watch some pretty good baseball. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. A lot of fun on Sunday, that was for sure, when the Astros wrapped up their first division title in 16 years. Now they go after 
100 win season. They're still an outside shot. They would have to go 10 and 2 that they could match the 1998 franchise mark of 102 wins. All in all, it has been a great year for the Astros as they play the final 12 games of the 2017 regular season. Slider that Fisher misses, it's 1 and 2. Before this season, since 2007, James Shields had made more starts than anybody in baseball. Going on the DL for the first time this year, Shields was passed by two starts. He trails Justin Verlander by two starts for the most starts in baseball since 07. On the ground, Mancata to short. Anderson return in time to get the speedy Fisher to end the inning. The Astros do score a run on the base hit by Evan Gaddison lead one nothing after two. White Sox, we head to the third inning. Believe it or not, on this Wednesday, it's our final time of the year with Brianna Carbonell. Yes. How crazy is this? Senior manager of promotions and events. Is the, car is the carnival in town or? Do I look the same? Have I changed? You, you've changed over the year. <laughs> you have changed a little bit it's over It's been a while since we've seen you, but I, geez. I was inspired by Keuchel, and so, you know, in honor of our last Keuchel's corner for uh, the regular season, I decided to put on the beard to start this segment. So, like it. yeah, we got Keuchel's corner kicking off tomorrow, and uh, tickets are still available. And so, you know, as part of that ticket package, you get this lovely beard and uh, a T-shirt, and the T-shirt design is only we put Keuchel in a corner. So, yeah. Uh, Tickets are still available. Go to Astros.com slash Keuchel's Corner and check that out. But a fun promotion that we've been doing all season long, and uh, we're excited to, to finish up the regular season with this lovely promotion and this T-shirt. So, With the bright red lipsticks, perfect. Yeah. 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 Probably not That's exactly Keuchel-esque, but, you no, know. No, no, it works because it stands out. Yeah. And this is it. This is Dallas's last start at home this year. i got to be worth something over here. There you go. There we go. Only you should have put on the beard. This would have been a lot less frightening, probably. <laughs> you, you said it. Bri yeah, well. <laughs> Brianna, what a weekend. They wrap up the division on Sunday, get to celebrate. Fans got to come out all weekend long and, and really have a good time, beginning with our Big and Bright Friday nights. And we actually have our final Big and Bright Friday night coming up against the Angels this weekend. We do, we do. It's been a fun one this year. So our Big and Bright Friday nights have kind of been the motto of come early and stay late. So we've had our, our pregame happy hours presented by Budweiser. You can come out between 5 and 6.30 out in the Budweiser brew house. And we've got great happy hour specials there. Um, we've got a live DJ that fans can kind of hang out and listen to. Um, but $6, you know, Budweiser select draft beers and uh, some, some food specials as well. Nice catch by Derek Fisher on the run to retire Tim Anderson for the first out of the inning in the third. And I, I love the fact that Evan and Brian are combining their names. So Evan Gaddis and Brian McCann become Brevin McGaddis. <laughs> um, so we had fun with this. So this is our Strozone t-shirt uh, for our Friday's fan section in Strozone. Um, you know, every Friday night we've been doing this Strozone fan section and we've had a lot of fun with the t-shirt designs. 
Um, so it, this one is, is a fun one because we're playing off of the idea that fans constantly are getting um, Brian McCann and Evan Gaddis, you know, confused. So uh, Brevin McGaddis, the adventures of Brevin McGaddis. I don't so. think we've helped at all. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, wait, which one is that one? Yeah. No. And they're always right next to each other. I know. Inevitably, right? When you're like, oh, okay, it's this one or that one. But um, so, yeah, we did a, a fun play on that T-shirt, and it's the adventures of Brevin McGaddis. So fans that are in that Strozone section um, in the mezzanine on Friday will get that T-shirt. So it's been a fun one, and we'll continue it with it next year. Um, as we go into 2018. Can you possibly, there, there they are, yeah. one with a mask tonight, so it's a little <laughs> easier to tell them apart. Hey, it, is it possible for the Strozone to get any more popular than it was in 2017? You know, we've had a lot of fun with it, and we're excited to kind of vamp it up next year, too. So uh, the T-shirt designs have been phenomenal. We have a great graphics team that puts those together every um, every Friday night. So it's been a lot of fun, and we're, we're looking forward to continuing with it next year. So. Saturday, want to make sure people know that's not a normal start time. Correct, yep. So the originally scheduled 6 o'clock is now a 12 o'clock game. So everyone can come out to Minute Maid Park nice and early. You can stay late on Friday, come early. Um, and we have our Hispanic Heritage Street Festival that we're doing. So from 10 to 12 in uh, on the Crawford Street Plaza, uh, we'll have live music, um, a mariachi band, we'll have food trucks. Uh, we'll have some Latin dancers kind of roaming around. So just kind of a fun her Hispanic heritage um, tribute, right? So it, it should be a good time for folks that are coming out. Um, you do need a game ticket to come to that Hispanic Heritage Street Fest, so uh, fans can come out to that. But uh, it should be a good time and some, you know, a way to kind of kick it early here at Minute Maid Park and have have a have a different experience out on the plaza on Crawford Street. I don't think you guys have had a bad street fest all year long. They've been a lot of fun They've this been year. incredible. Yeah, yeah. So this one will be our earliest one. <laughs> um, but, you know, why not come out and have a margarita at 11 a.m.? <laughs> hey, all you need is an excuse. Something That's wrong, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. We have a quick <laughs> inning, Brianna. Uh, so quickly, Sunday Fan Appreciation Day. Yep, so every half inning we'll be giving away um, prizes to fans that are in attendance. And then we also have two giveaways. So we have a schedule pen and a team post that fans will get. So schedule you've got pen. the schedule pen there. Um, it shows our 2018 oh, schedule. Yes. There you go. <laughs> uh, That's so pen. Yeah. So a quick, a, a nice tool for people to be able to use um, and check out our schedule for next year. We'll promote Shooting Star auditions later on in the broadcast. Awesome. Thank you, Brianna. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Brianna. All right. We head to the bottom of the third. It is still one nothing. Inning. Astros with the lead on an Evan Gaddis RBI base hit to center field. James Shields in his third inning of work will face Cameron Maben, who's had success against him, seven for 19 in his career. Shields delivers a strike on the outside corner. It's 0 1. New right fielder for the White Sox, Abasiel Garcia, is out of the game. And Alan Hansen has come on to take the place of Garcia. One of the Top hitters in the league. Garcia second in batting in the AL behind 
just Jose Altuve has to leave the game. And Hansen takes over. One look at Peacock's slider, and he said, ah, it's going to kill my average. I'm out of here. <laughs> Hopefully, it's nothing serious. So hopefully we see Abbasiel in this series tomorrow, which wraps up. The White Sox have been playing better baseball lately, other than the Indians. They've had the best record in the Central the last week and a half or so as Maven strikes out. Julia? Hey, it's the Shiner Box spotlight falling on, well, yesterday's birthday boy, George Springer, who was who helped the Springer show in the eighth. Springer trying to score from third on Altuve's ground out here. This was reviewed. The replay showed that he did catch a little bit of the plate, so the run did score. He swiped it there with his left hand. AJ told him, like the hustle, don't ever do it again until October. <laughs> and Springer, who told me in the post game, probably not going to do that again. He continued to say that these games count. So it's hard not to play hard, but I will try to be a little bit smarter. But that's how George Springer plays all out 100% coming through for his team. Yeah, I think the point AJ was trying to drive home to George, and I think it did finally resonate, was there's when you have a runner on third base and less than two outs, you either have the contact player or, or not. The contact play meaning Blummer, of course, as soon as the ball's hit, you're off to, to home plate. When it's not on, you're not looking necessarily for your runner to try and score in that scenario because it does create that head first slide into home plate. But that's not what A.J. Hinch wanted when he gave George the hold stop. No. We've seen head first slides go very badly for a lot of baseball players around the league and for a couple of Houston Astros. So, yeah, you don't want to see him get hurt heading into the playoffs. He's your leadoff man. He is your power source. He is your energy source. So just George back it down just a hair for the next couple couple games. He got to score a run on his birthday so there was that. <laughs> it, was, it was not necessarily what AJ was looking for. He was happy he scored the run. Don't get us wrong. He almost put his face through a cheese grater on the way in. <laughs> that would have been not good. Here's Josh Reddick taking a ball from Shields. And now called strike on the outside corner. It's one and one. Always with a smile, always having a good time. George Springer now 28 years and a day old. It's another birthday today. Ken Giles turning 27. AJ Hinch saying after the game last night, Giles having the night off as he has pitched a lot of baseball lately. So Ken gets to chill out in the bullpen, knowing he doesn't have to go out there tonight. Bill Brown, Brownie, Brownie's birthday with the big question marks. Crispin Glover and Sophia Loren. Happy birthday to Brownie. He's usually out here. Have not seen him tonight. Oh, he's on the town. Is he? Oh. Tearing it up. Diane took him out. Probably dinner and dancing. Awesome. Well, happy birthday, Brownie, if you happen to be somewhere where you can hear the broadcast. Two and two pitches set in the air. Yolmer Sanchez, a long run. He'll get back there in shallow left to make the play. One, two, three inning for Shields. We head to the fourth in a one-nothing game.
take a look at today's Chevy Stroh poll. It's on our Twitter page at ATT Sportsnet SW. You can vote there. How many players should be allowed on an active playoff roster? Should it be 25 like it is now? 26 to 30, maybe a couple of extra on there, or the full man, 440 man roster. Or how about 25 and then you would be allowed to make some changes during a series? Tweet us. Let us know. Vote and then tell us what you think. How about that? Todd. All right, Julia. Fourth inning baseball. I think that's an easy one for me. Please don't vote C. No. I mean, there's more off days in the postseason than there are in the regular season. Yeah. So if you can get through the regular season with 25. Stay with it. Stay with it. I, I'd like to see it switch in September. I'd like that. The last one we're going to have a kind of like a rotating guys through the series in September. <laughs> yeah, but how many can you change out on a given day? Two or three. Yeah. Maybe, you know, you're starting rotation guys. Load up with lefties again. Yep. Load up. Those wow. series matchups. I would like to see September have a 25 man active roster. And that includes and that still gives you more flexibility in the regular season because four of those guys that aren't going to be on your active roster are starters that aren't going that night. Yeah. So you in essence have other guys to work with. Roster expansion I understand it's an opportunity to get kids some time and especially for the White Sox see some faces that might be part of their future. In the Astros case see some young guys who did well at the minor league level all year long. But some of these games with 14 Ugh. relievers or more. Just Ooh. it's it's not real baseball. It's not the same baseball that you play for five months. Oh, I completely agree. Three and one on Sanchez and for just the second time since the All Star break Brad Peacock has walked a leadoff hitter in an inning. He had trouble locating the Sanchez the first time. Eventually got him. On a comeback here to the mound. Now he walks the leadoff hitter. Well, by Brad's standards, that was a complete yard sale of fastballs up there to Sanchez. Usually, those burners, those guys that can run at the top of the order, you want to have those guys earn their way on, not give them that free pass. Now, Makata rips one to right, and that is a line drive, two run home run. 22 year old second baseman Yoan Makata continues to do damage against the Astros. As he hits his seventh home run and gives the White Sox a two to one lead. That is something you don't see happen very often against Brad Peacock is the home run. Turned on that inside pitch. We talked about the missing the spots the previous walk. That's what leads to that ninth home run against him. The Mankata has just feasted on Astro pitching no matter how good they are. Coming in other than Lance McCullers and James Paxton. Peacock was third in the major leagues. Minimum 100 pitches and fewest home runs allowed per nine. Got to hit up. Absolute screaming line drive over the wall and right. First hit of the game for the White Sox results in two runs. It was a 107.3 mile an hour laser out to right field. Cotto was one of the big pieces in that Chris Sale trade, and we're seeing why. He is a talented young second baseman. Counts one and two on a brave. Number one prospect at every stop along the way in his minor league career. Now getting a chance at the big level for the first time. Two and two the count. Sure, the home run frustrates Brad, but probably that leadoff walk frustrates him even more. Brave taps it foul. You know that roster that we were just talking about, what you said about the series and the days off and the TV schedules these guys work on in the playoffs allows them to really alter those rosters a little bit as far as pitching is concerned. You don't need that bullpen depth because those guys are going to get the rest. Load up on position guys play some matchups left on right. I think for that reason more than likely it's still to be determined but more than likely A.J. Hinch who's had an eight man bullpen all year would elect to go to just a seven man bullpen in the postseason and you don't need a fifth starter 
Yeah. You go two games day off two games day off so four starters and seven relievers you might only need 11 pitchers instead of 13 that you've had in the regular season. It's a really good point. So now you go from a three man bench to a five man bench. And a third catcher becomes a viable option. Well, for the Astros, that's actually a big deal having that third catcher because then you can rotate Evan Gaddis as a DH or Brian McCann as the DH. Maybe have some defensive support later in the game, depending on who you take on that roster. I think that's a big deal for the Astros. Up the middle, off the mound, Correa comes in and retires Abreu. That's the first out of the fourth inning. And the important decision for AJ with in terms of Brad Peacock is where is he the most valuable is he most valuable as one of my top four starters or if I put him in that bullpen as a tweener guy it's a tough call because you've seen him so successful doing both it'll be hard not to imagine Peacock getting a start as good as he has been lately but there are still 12 games to go. Brad will get three more starts the one here tonight. One in Texas and one in Boston in the final series of the season. I really feel that the Lance McCullers start or starts before the postseason will will help AJ figure out what to do with that rotation and that bullpen. Astros hoping to see Lance. Final game of this homestand before they head to Texas. Not just see him there. See him pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's where we want to see him. There's a called strike. It's two and one. When you talk about two earned runs or less in 12 of the last 15 starts, you are in an elite group. That includes your teammate Justin Verlander, Corey Kluber, Steven Strasburg. Cameron Maven puts it away or will for Nikki Delmonico's fly ball. Yeah, those are some insanely good names and a lot of them. Yeah a little surprising there's that many. I mean that's a that's a relatively extended streak of two earned runs or less. For Peacock going all the way back to the middle of June. Started with his start against the Rangers on June 13th. But that's consistency and the three starts in those 15 where he has allowed more than two earned runs. The Astros have won all those games. <laughs> they were scoring big. And he allowed, he got two of the wins. He had a lot of run support to work with. In one of those games against Atlanta, he had 16 runs, gave up three. And then that started against the Blue Jays, he had a, a huge lead and gave up seven. So, I mean, not that he wasn't focused, or he's probably pitching more towards contact than he would normally in a one run game. That was a horrific swing. Alan Hansen's first chance to bat against Brad Peacock just took a crazy swing. He was on the move. He was going for a little slap, slap hit. That hit his foot? He After the hit swing? Anything he wants, but that was a swing and a half. Yeah, it was a swing, but that's a. No, the ball bounces. It's going for a wicked googly. It's a cricket term. <laughs> I, I was with you. I liked it. <laughs> One and two the count. I was going to say all he has to do is throw a pitch anywhere close, but that time he laid off the 0-2 pitch. Hansen has never faced Peacock before. You may have noticed that. Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Brad. He picks up his fifth strikeout of the game. Does allow a two-run home run. It's now two to one White Sox.
start. It's driven by your Texas Ford dealers, and it's talking about Jose Altuve, 2014 to 16 on your left-hand side as far as distribution of hits. 2017 on the right-hand side, moving some of those hits towards the other side of the field. He's getting some pitches away, getting some off speed, a lot of sliders going the other way. He went oppo taco with some of that power for this 24th home run. But Jose Altuve, I really feel last year in particular, he was getting challenged inside. He started to turn on some pitches. This year, it looks like things are moving around a little bit. Now he's taking the pitch the other way to compile a high average and high hit totals. First three of bats last night hit the ball the other way, including that home run that gave the Astros a lead. Eventually, he used to win that game three to one. Altuve driving in the last run with that hustle play by George Springer. He goes the other way here and sends Hansen back. Right fielder makes the play in front of the track, and Altuve retired for the second time. He's the first out of the fourth inning. Astros only have a couple of hits tonight against Shields. Game in back to back batters, Marwin Gonzalez and Evan Gaddis. Gaddis driving in a run in the second inning. Here's Carlos Correa. He walked and scored a run his first time up. Correa sitting at 21 home runs, hitting his 21st in the clinching game on Sunday against the Mariners. His rookie season, he had 22 home runs. That is his career high. Had 20 last year. Correa is currently three at bat shy of his total from his rookie year when he hit those 22 homers. There's a call strike. Shields ahead 0 and 2. And he gets Correa swinging. That is a third strikeout for Shields in the second out of the fourth inning. Are you following AT&T Sportsnet on social media? From player and team stats to trivia and behind the scenes photos, find us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest on the Astros all season long. Two outs, bases empty. That'll bring up Marwin Gonzalez. Marwin singled into center field his first time up. The thing we've seen from Shields tonight, it's been mostly fastball slider or cutter. He used to be. A heavy changeup guy. That used to be his bread and butter pitch. It, yeah. This year he has thrown by far the fewest changeups of his career, just about 11%, but he will throw more to lefties. But he has never thrown fewer than 20% changeups in a season, and some years as high as 30, 32%. There it is on the corner. Asking you shall receive. That 11, by far the lowest of his career. Never below 20% until 2017. You can see why the batting average against above 300. There's that cutter foul tip. And it's one and two. Not sure if you can tell, but James Shields is thoroughly annoyed with Marwin Gonzalez. Stepping out, wandering around the box, kicking the dirt around. <laughs> there were a couple times he was <laughs> gamesmanship. Breaking ball outside is two and two. There were a couple pitches before James. Literally took his glove off and had it tucked under his arm, holding the baseball, just staring at Marwin, going, Whatever you're ready, kid. <laughs> Marwin does take his time in the batter spot. Shields used to be one of the quickest workers in the league. Slowed the pace a little bit 
in his mid 30s. Tries to get Gonzalez chasing. He doesn't. And the count's now full. He throws quite a few more pitches per inning, too. Up to 17 and a half pitches per inning. Did he go? Close. This is the corner. Marwin draws a walk with two outs. Well, Marwin on for the second straight time. Now bring up Evan Gaddis. You spent some quality time with James Shield. Uh, James Shields in Tampa, didn't you? Good dude. Good, great guy. Yeah, I got to catch up with him yesterday. Uh, he was happy every stop along the way went from the Rays to the Royals kind of changed the culture up there for a while then San Diego and now the Chicago White Sox. He set the tone for everything that it was right about the Rays pitching staffs through those years. He was the guy that set the tone for price and price handed it down to Alex Cobb and now Chris Archer. But he was kind of the grandfather of it all. He, he started the work ethic. He brought the attitude. He used to. <laughs> He used to have a, a favorite saying amongst the pitchers whenever they would complain about either tough luck or a bad play behind them or anything that was outside their control. His favorite saying was if you don't like it pitch better. I like it. That goes you can use that throughout your life. <laughs> he did not want to hear any reason other than hey they had they got me today. Yeah he strike zone too small. Don't, don't like it pitch better pitch better. That's, that was his attitude and he set the tone he worked hard he. I mean, the reason he wears 33 has nothing to do that he, with the fact that he made 33 starts every year, but he took the ball every five days for his whole career. From 2006 all the way through this year, this is the first year he went on the DL. So, yeah, great guy, great guy to have kind of set the tone of your pitching staff for an organization. Good veteran leader. Gonzalez on the move and the cutter away, and Marwin slides in safely. With a stolen base, Marwin now with eight steals on the year. He has picked his spots in 11 tries. Good job by Marwin. Good pitch to run on it. I think you're right. Picking his spots, he's being smart about it. Getting a good pitch count to run in. Guys to run against. Good job going to the outside part of the bag. Now a chance for Evan to drive in his second run tonight. Shields and Narvaez having trouble getting on the signs. Three and one. Yuli Guriel waits on deck. Should be a good pitch for Evan to hit. Having Yuli on deck, I know it's another right-handed hitter, but Yuli just missed a pitch his last AB. We talked about how he is pretty consistent as far as exit velocity. Outside, ball four, a couple of two-out walks issued by Shields. Gonzalez and now Gaddis. Just mentioned that Yuli's been swinging the bat well of late. Last 14 games he has played in, hitting at 348. He scored seven runs with the OPS getting near 1,000. You've seen a couple home runs mixed in there on that road trip. But he has been a force in the top, in the middle, in the bottom part of this lineup. So he's hitting seven home today, and now it's an RBI situation for him. Shields has allowed at least one home run in each of his last nine starts. Does not get Guriel to chase there on a pitch outside. It's 1 0. Really with 17 home runs on the year. Should see a pitch to drive here. Shields has already walked two in this inning. Hit a ball in that left center field gap. Have Gaddis hop on his ox and run. And a breaking ball missed it. It's one and one. 
Blue Ox. Yep. Runners on second. Marwin Gonzalez and on first. Evan Gaddis. That's why Evan wears number 11. The year he hit 11 triples. Mm. Still waiting. Completely made that up. Still waiting for that first triple. Breaking ball fouled back. It's one and two. You swore it happened. I've seen it in the record books. <laughs> we, we sat here in awe. And there would be replays. And we just sit there and just pure silence enjoying the track around the bases. It was unbelievable. I can see a strange year where he had like five or six. Eleven. It's unbelievable. Two years ago, hasn't had one since. <laughs> it's exhausted. Uli stays alive on the one two pitch. Shields in the second inning went over 2,400 innings in his career, becoming the eighth active pitcher to cross that threshold. Doesn't get a chase there. It's two and two. Getting a report from the White Sox clubhouse that Avisiel Garcia left tonight's game with stomach discomfort. It it doesn't it happen in the visiting clubhouse, it especially is, here. His dollar dog night. Well, he got in early. Either that or he used that as an excuse to get in on a big dollar dog to go attack it. <laughs> And it's three and two. Yuli. How about that? Yuli going deep in the count. He's a three and a half pitch per AV type guy. He is. That might be excessive. He has got a big lead over the next closest for the fewest pitches seen this year per plate appearance, but now seeing his seventh pitch in this sequence. Runners will be on the move with two outs. In the right center field, that ball is going to be down into the wall. Marwin scores. Gaddis around third. He'll score. Yuli Gurriel, a two RBI double, and the Astros regain the lead, three to two. Big hit by Yuli. More two out RBIs and runs scored for the Houston Astros, but a sweeping slider and a 3 2 count. And just to give you an idea of how good Yuli is, he lets that ball travel. He smoked that baseball. He was not fooled at all on that elevated slider. I've just been so impressed with Yuli over the last year and a half. He continues to get better and put together some very professional ABs. This still counts as his rookie season. He was right on the verge of going past that rookie threshold last year. With that double, which gives him 39 on the year, he now has 57 extra base hits, which is a new Astros rookie record. Wow. Broke the tie with Hunter Pence. When you're talking about exit below, that one was 107 miles an hour off the bat. On a slider and a 3-2 count. Granted, it was elevated, good pitch to hit. Still to barrel it up and go with it. Nice. We mentioned Yuli had to go 15 for 40 in the final 12 games to hit 300 on the year. One for two tonight. Marwin's been on base twice. He needed a 14 for 37. So those guys in pursuit of 300 now up to 296 and 295 respectively, and meeting at the mound for Shields and the White Sox. What a year for Yuli. Learning to play first base exclusively. Continues to do damage wherever they put him in the lineup. Tonight it's in the seventh spot. Well, this is not the A lineup. I mean, if you were actually going to put certain guys in certain places, and it's no offense to anybody in the lineup today, but it's not, you know, that pure best lineup that you're going to see. Yuli's hitting seventh. And if you're a playoff, I don't. I mean, Chris Sale's going to have his issues. Uh, you know, these Rick Porcello, Kluber. You have to pitch one through nine against the Houston Astros, and I think that's part of the appeal 
for a lot of analysts and a lot of guys who watch baseball who say the Astros have a real shot in the postseason because one through nine they are going to put an at bat up against a tough opposing pitcher. I know the Yankees have been scoring a lot of runs in the second half and are approaching the Astros run total but it's really hard to argue with the fact that the Astros have had the best offense all year long and put the best at bats together. They, the, the combination of lack of strikeouts and the run scored and slugging and on base. Well I was just going to get after the the swing and miss issue. The Astros don't have that swing and miss issue. I was looking at some numbers today with two strikes. The Houston Astros are hitting 201 coming into this game. The Major League average was a buck 76. So they are considerably better. But at the same time, the Yankees do put up runs if you make mistakes. But if you execute and put pitches down where they create swings and misses, the Yankees will swing and miss. Tonight, all three runs batted in on two strike pitches. Gaddis the base hit and Yuli on a 3 2 pitch. This time, Shields able to get Fisher on a two strike pitch. As he picks up his four strikeout, but the Astros have regained the lead as three to two. on AT&T Sportsnet is presented by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide, that's transparency. By the all new 2017 Nissan Titan with America's best limited truck warranty. See dealer for warranty details. Wednesday night baseball, Astros and White Sox from Minute Maid Park. The White Sox have just the lone hit, but it was a two run home run by Yoan Mancata. Gave Chicago a two to one lead. Astros came back for two of their own. With Yuli Gurriel's two out, two strike RBI double. And now we head to the fifth. And Brad Peacock will face the six, seven, eight hitters for the White Sox, starting with Omar Narvaez. Narvaez takes one outside for a ball. It's one and zero. Oh. Brad walked. Yomer Sanchez to start the fourth and then allowed a home run to Yohan Mancata on the next pitch. With the only base runners of the game, he's allowed. Out of the count here, 2 0. Oh. Peacock got to celebrate for the first time on Sunday, even though he was part of the 2015 team. He was rehabbing at the time, did not celebrate with the wild card clinch in Arizona. Now he celebrated on Sunday, and we've talked about the possibilities of him pitching in the postseason. He has never pitched before in the postseason. Does his personality fit a profile, someone who would not be affected by the bright lights? It's kind of tough because he's so subdued. It might play well just because he might be overwhelmed by the situation or it might be a situation where he goes oh my gosh they gave me the baseball and a lot of us are going to say yeah we gave you the baseball you deserve it but I think he's been around long enough and he's pitched 
It might. For me, it's a situation where he's earned the right to pitch in the playoffs. Therefore, I think he would do well because he, he respects the opportunity. But it will be a little bit different. It'll be great to see him out there with some adrenaline. Right now, and a lot can change in the last week and a half of the season, but right now, whoever your game three or four starter is, and let's face it, it's going to be Keiko Verlander, Verlander, Keiko, some form of that one, too. So whoever your three and four starters are, right now it looks like it's going to be on the road, which could either be at Fenway Park or at Yankee Stadium, depending on who wins the AL East, if, in fact, the standings stay the way they are. Peacock walks a leadoff batter. That's the second time since the All-Star break, third time since the All-Star break, and second time in the last two innings. Julia? Well, one of the storylines here recently with Brad is is getting through the the third time through the order getting through that sixth and seventh yes, inning and that being a, one of his setbacks or one of his weaknesses what he's been trying to work on. Well you look at what starting starting pitchers do in the playoffs uh, averaging just five innings so things have changed in, in the way that that managers manage these ball games now with that middle relief and all these relievers coming along and AJ mentioned that before and that may not matter in the postseason. However, right now they are still going to push this guy to, to push for six innings, push for seven innings to get as deep as he can. Uh, they are still training this guy uh, for the future as well. But right now getting him to that point of fatigue and so he'll be strong heading into the postseason. He's only had four starts Blummer of 100 pitches or more. So they haven't really even though he's pitched five six innings at a time they usually get him out of there in that 90 to 100 pitch plateau. And that graphic that we showed with the innings pitched over the years kind of goes to your point with the scheduling in the postseason. It allows those managers to go to their bullpens a little bit quicker and more often because of the days off. And it is a whole different animal in the postseason. The bullpen, as we've seen in recent years, used 12 outs at a time with regularity. In fact, that was the average last year. The average game used the bullpen for four innings. Yeah, I, analytics say don't let your starter go three times through an order. Bullpens now are being built to pick up those outs that Todd's talking about, so it does condense the starting out starters outing. But Brad has been very good the first two times through an order. He showed you the bullpen graphic last night. There's probably six spots that are pretty much locked in. We saw Will Harris, Luke Gregerson last night, Joe Musgrove, Ken Giles have been outstanding. They need the lefty out of Francisco Liriano. So you're looking at one more spot that's available out of the bullpen. I didn't mention Devo. Devo the Dragon of course is on there. So that spot would either be one of the guys that is not one of the four starters or potentially a Francis Martez who we've seen work as a starter and out of the bullpen. That's going to be a decision to be made. and. and you know part of it is AJ goes all right Brad Peacock has done that before we know he can be successful there. That's where the dilemma comes in. Because you know a Morton a McHugh really haven't been in that in that bullpen situation all year. So it's a lot a lot to be determined here in the final 12 games. Yeah, cause you, I mean if prep is and routine are an issue. For those guys that have been in the rotation move back there you're right Peacock has done that so he's a little more accustomed to developing a routine quickly to be that guy. He's so good so early on that you want to stay with him and keep your team in the ball game and suppress the opposing offense in time for your offense to figure it out and put up some runs. And I know fans are saying well what about Lance as a possibility for the bullpen too. I'd like to see him healthy and then we can have that conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to see him healthy and throwing strikes with his fastball and, you know, and power curve. And then yes we can we can figure that out from there. And if he's right which we all hope he is and, and if, he's he, set, if he's pre all star break right. He's in the rotation. No doubt. That, I mean hands down. Pitcher of the month in May. Yeah. All star. It's a, it's a good problem to have and it's a problem. That A.J. Hinch has a more difficult decision now because of the addition of Justin Berlin. Yeah, and I don't think it would be a situation where you move one of these guys, Morton or a Peacock, McCullers, whatever, McHugh out in that bullpen, and you turn it into a tandem start or a piggyback type situation. I think it'd just be a situation where you have that guy come in and maybe Peacock goes two innings, and then you get to those guys that are wipe out in the back end of your bullpen. 
But to your point about starting possibly the third third four starters starting on the road. Peacock this season 7 and 0 with a 2.83 on the road. And that's in 11 games that he started. And if the trend holds he'll get a lot of run support in that game. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. <laughs> One and two on Matt Davidson, who struck out his first time up. I'm with you, though. It's fun to talk about. Does not chase there. It's two and two. Davidson, another one of these young guns in the lineup. Has struck out against right hand pitching this year 119 times in 291 plate appearances. Peacock tried to get him to chase the slider on the one two pitch. See if he goes back there again, two two. Fastball instead is fouled away. Boston has a six nothing lead tonight in Baltimore. Red Sox won another extra inning game last night, beating the Orioles in 11 innings. Was a sweeper that was not even close, so Davidson didn't offer in his three and two. Kind of surprised to see Tim Anderson still standing at second and first base. And 13 bags on the season, he's only been caught once. Fifth full count of the night for Peacock. There goes the runner. The pitch is hit on one hop to Marwin. The third baseman's throw is low. Picked by Yuli Gurriel. Anderson, who was on the move, gets all the way to third. Marwin down to a knee. Ended up making a low throw, and Yuli with a nice play. You might want to hug Yuli after this inning for picking him up right there. He didn't really get his feet set after going down to a knee to catch that. Jam shot line drive on a hop. He just kind of stands up and slings it. A good pick by Yuli. I think Yuli was pretty happy with the fact that he made the play and wasn't worried about throwing back across the diamond to get Tim Anderson. And Anderson did a good job rounding and never hesitated. So the ground out for the second out, and now Peacock trying to get Adam Engel, the number nine hitter, and keep this a one run lead for the Astros. James Shields has walked three in this game. All three of those walks have come around to score. Peacock has walked two. The first walk came around to score. See what happens in this inning as Anderson replaced Narvaez on a fielder's choice after he walked. There's a strike poured over the outside corner. It's one and two. Brad's been around 17 pitches per inning all season long, a little bit more than that. 17 pitches through five would be 85 pitches. Angle stays alive at one and two. Than hits in this game. Five runs scored on four total hits. Angle keeps battling. He will not go away. He's not putting the ball in play, but he's doing just enough to extend these ABs. And the Anderson strike zone shows where Brad Peacock and Evan Gaddis are going to work outside and low. Now they come in and get a pop up. Gaddis and Marwin converge. It's Marwin who puts it away for the final out. White Sox strand a runner at third. We are through four and a half. George Springer will lead things off for the Astros. He'll be the number two hitter in the next inning.
three two we headed the bottom half of the fifth inning Cameron Maben and then the top of the order due up for the Astros and Maben sends one past the mound Moncada the second baseman makes the play for out number one one pitch and one out. RBI single by Evan Gaddis, a two RBI double by Yuli Gurriel. The run scoring hits tonight for the Astros. And now George Springer will bat. He is grounded out to second both times tonight. We have Brianna Carbonell in with us earlier in the third inning. I want to thank her, senior manager of promotions and events for the Astros, all season long for telling us about the latest happenings here at Minute Maid Park, our final homestand of the year. Got to almost every category, but Peacock pitched so quickly in that third inning. The one we missed was the auditions to become a shooting star for next year. Chance to dance on the dugouts, toss souvenirs, sing along during the seventh inning stretch. A lot of volunteer time in the community. There you see November 11th and 12th at Minute Maid Park. You can online register at astros.com slash shooting stars. If you want to become part of the team next year. One and two the count to George Springer. Shields wants the breaking ball here. And George sends it to left field pretty well hit to the wall leaping up and making the catch is Nikki Delmonico right up against the scoreboard by the Rangers Seattle score Delmonico took a hit away from Springer. Like George got it off the end of that. But you never know here at Minute Maid Park, and it was a good job by Delmonico not giving up on that play. Go back there, find the wall early, and give it a shot. Reddick takes a call strike. Gotta love George's attitude. <laughs> Misses outside, it's one and one. Shields has pitched better in his last five starts and really going back to early August has better numbers since dropping down. Had an ERA above six prior to that. There's a fair ball pass to Brayu down the right field line. Reddick heading to second and he's in with a double. Josh Reddick a two out base hit for the Astros in the fifth. Must have taken a crazy bounce on Jose Abreu. Ball raked right down the right field line, but Abreu looked like he was in great position, playing almost no doubles, sim directly on that line, just swinging a miss. Shields is going to have to heed his own advice tonight because he's had a couple of plays that should have been knocked down by his infielders. Wow. Mancada up the middle earlier on Evan Gaddis. And now that ball that got by Abreu. And now Jose Altuve gets a chance with a runner in scoring position and two outs. And a chance to do something that they did very well pre All Star break is take advantage of mistakes by the other team. It is a double for Josh. He's now one for three. And Altuve, who was struck out and flied out, digs in. Takes a pitch away for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Altuve with 194 hits. Countdown is on. Two and over count. <laughs> 
79 runs batted in for Altuve. He could join Josh Reddick and Marwin Gonzalez in the 80 RBI club. Now this one away. It's two and one. Reddick and Marwin both have 82. Altuve and Springer with 79. Side is three and one. Shields has got himself into some trouble tonight with the walk. Walk Carlos Correa in the second, Marwin and Gaddis in the fourth. They all came around to score. I'll tell you what, Marwin Gonzalez is already on deck, waiting for Altuve to be on base and Correa to be at the plate. Some confidence in his teammates right there with two outs. No doubt. Altuve takes one inside, ball four. Fourth walk issued by Shields, and the Astros have two on and two outs for Carlos Correa. The most popular way to follow the Astros' postseason push is MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy game day video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Don Cooper out, the longtime pitching coach for the White Sox, to talk to James Shields. A double by Reddick that got past Jose Abreu, then a walk to Jose Altuve, and now Shields will face Carlos Correa. Pitching Shields has faced the Astros. Over his career. Five separate starts. Tonight is six start. Only faced them twice now since 2013. Back in 2011, Shields pitched a complete game here against the Astros and wrapped up three straight starts where he went complete game for three in a row. Back. That doesn't happen very often, just six years later. Correa has walked and struck out. into right field here comes Hanson diving attempt and it stays in the webbing of his glove Alan Hanson takes one away from Correa it's a good swing by Carlos Correa nothing to show for it because Alan Hanson was making a good play coming in earlier able to hold on just barely
Sox here in the top of the sixth inning. And it's time to play Name That Astro, presented by your local Honda dealer. No, no, no. Oh, man. Of course they give this one to me. Buns, 17-year <laughs> Major League career. Who is it? Name That Astro. Know, Make I sure know. you tweet at Julia Morales or at <laughs> AT&T Sportsnet SW. Why did you get that one? I, I know it. why I got it. Julia and I got this one. Lickety split. There's that, that middle clue. It is Dollar Dog Wednesday, but that's why buns might be in there. I don't know. <laughs> I like Julia laughing in the background. That's good. Gilmer Sanchez leads off against Brad Peacock. He has bullpen action going for the first time. Off the end of the bat, it's 0 2. There is the lefty Francisco Liriano. Lefty due up fourth in this inning, so more than likely Brad has the first three batters. In the dirt, it's one and two. It's a big hand and a big hat. It's a big night. Big hats everywhere tonight. Yeah, there are. Can't miss them. Called third strike. Peacock on the inside corner with the fastball. Freezes Sanchez. Picks up a strikeout. His sixth of the ball game. A little bit better location this time around. Walked him last time up, but a paint job down and in. And we talked about Brad Peacock. One, two th times through the order is usually pretty good. Last couple of innings, he's had some issues. He threw 22 pitches in the fourth inning, 24 pitches in the fifth inning. Through all this, with 46 pitches the last two innings, he still only allowed the one hit, a home run to Yohan Mankata, the hit hitter right now. A one pitch grounded on a couple of hops. Marvin with a short hop play, and there's two away. Don't miss the final regular season home game of 2017. It is Fan Appreciation Night. Fans in attendance for the Sunday night home finale get a 2017 team photo and a 2018 schedule pen presented by Saltgrass Steakhouse. We got ours earlier tonight. Visit Astros.com slash promotions for tickets and info. This pen's going to look great in my pocket protector. All next to your schedule right here. You are so excited about that. <laughs> yeah. I, one thing people have gotten to know about me this year. Yeah. Is I always have a schedule. On me. Not just a schedule. You have like the original pocket schedule. Oh yeah. This is, is that the first one you got? At the no, beginning I, of the I season? gone through about three or four. Have you? Because they wear out. Just tattered. Do you leave them in your pants when you, you know, you're doing the laundry? No, no, we, no. Because you have to. You have to have. This will be so much easier. So this, yeah, that's next. This right is here. this is for fan appreciation night. This, yeah. So I could go with the pen next year. But if you ever see me and you want to know what's coming up on the Astro schedule, it's there always it is. it's always right here. Your money on it. I mean, we were out golfing and it's yeah, I got it right here, guys. And it's a little tattered. Does not leave you. We're at the end of the year. So yes. That's I, your third one, you said. Third. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So now you know. But now I can just go pen. Yeah. Dual, you're a dual threat presence now. Yes. Yes. There it is. Next year, memorize it. It's going to start out with the Rangers on the road, and then the home opener is against the Baltimore Orioles. One-two pitch just misses down low to Jose Abreu. It's two and two. You know what looks good on that schedule? It's four extra days off. Yep. And we're going to start in March next year, right? Yep. March 29th, Texas Rangers on the road, four games set. They've added some days into the schedule. Instead of starting on a Monday, they're going to start on the previous the Thursday. Yep. Wrap around Thursday. Thursday. Yep. I think everybody's starting on the same day this year. So the Astros will have to wait till that Monday after the opener in Texas before they can unfurl the division banner. There's a slow ground ball to Altuve, and Brad Peacock is through six innings of one-hit baseball. Just a home run allowed in six innings.
Astros leading the White Sox and this week on a brand new Astros bases loaded the team discusses one of their favorite pastimes. Jeff Batwell explains his iconic batting stance and we take a look back at the dramatic pennant chase of 2001. All that and more on Astros bases loaded only on AT&T Sportsnet. TK. All right Julia looking forward to that. Also looking forward to the bottom half of the sixth inning. See if the Astros can tack on some runs here leading three to two against James Shields. Marwin's been on base a couple of times. Shields misses outside for ball one. One hope pitch. There's a called strike. Room to change up. It's one ball and one strike. Astro scored one in the second on an RBI single by Evan Gaddis and two more in the fourth on a two out two strike two RBI double by Yuli Gurriel. Pitch misses down and into Marwin it's two and one. Mentioned Shields is making his 20th start of the season. He would be in line for two more starts if the White Sox choose or Shields chooses for that matter but they have a lot of young arms that they are taking a look at here over the final few games of the 2017 schedule. Marwin into left field for a base hit. He's a leadoff base runner for the Astros. And Marwin's been on base all three times, two for two with a walk. Talk about that arm angle dropping for James Shields. Last pitch, he got way down there, almost Laredo style. That's the one concern he said is that it is a relatively new delivery so trying to stay consistent with the arm slot is definitely an issue. Here's Evan Gaddis. Evan and Marwin have been on base combined all five times tonight. Marwin two for two with a walk Gaddis one for one with a walk and an RBI. Francisco Liriano continues to warm up in the Astros bullpen so more than likely Brad Peacock's night is over six innings 99 pitches and he only allowed one hit did walk a couple and one of those walks cost him a run the one hit was a two run home run pitch in the dirt to evidence one and one. Shields has walked four and struck out four in five innings plus a batter. In that Red Sox eight nothing lead over the Orioles in Baltimore Chris Sale has gone eight innings of four hit shutout baseball. He has struck out 13 and now has 300 strikeouts on the season. Man, oh man. Did I see something? Or go ahead and say it because you might be saying what I'm thinking. I was going to say that would potentially be your game one yeah. opposition in the playoffs. I wonder how many Red Sox pitchers have punched down 300 in a season. It's got to be Pedro Martinez, has got to be up there somewhere. We can look it up. It's the beauty of it. We will have an answer shortly. But 300, Man. still not out of the game as he is through eight innings, although he has thrown 111 pitches. So burn it out. Let it ride in an 8 0 game. Yeah. Gregory Infante and Jace Fry warming up for the White Sox. Righty and lefty in their bullpen. Two and one to Evan Gaddis. In the center field, back goes Engel, and he makes the play. Astros starting to hit some line drives against Shields. Correa retired in the fifth, and now Gaddis the first out of the sixth. This high velocity stat is presented by Xfinity with Yuli Gurriel coming up. That rocket of a double going the other way on a 3 2 slider up out over the plate. 106.8 miles an hour off the barrel of Yuli Gurriel. Only a 16 degree launch angle. That's why it ended up being a double. If he gets a little more under that, maybe he shoots it into that bullpen for a home run, but a good swing by Yuli. And another high velo at bat.
So only one Boston Red Sox has ever struck out more than 300, and it was in 1999. Pedro. Pedro Martinez, 313. Rocket fell nine short in 1988. So he needs. What was Pedro's total? 313. He's going to get two more starts. Well, he'll get one more start for sure, and then I guess the Red Sox will see where things are for that final series. Here's a line drive into left field for a base hit. That almost scoots by Delmonico. He didn't even know he caught that ball, <laughs> and he gets it back in. That ball scooted on him, and he looked behind him as if it got by him, but it was in his glove and held Marwin to second base. He almost deeped Marwin. But another high velocity exit for Yuli Gurriel that leads to that base hit. You can see it, but it's skipping on the turf out there. Almost gets under the glove of Delmonico. And the reaction he had almost set up. Marwin turning second, going to third. It was almost a great deke. He's been around baseball for a while. His dad's the head coach, University of Tennessee baseball team. So tried to pull a little slide of hand on Marwin. It almost worked. Here's Derek Fisher. Called strike. It's 0 1. Or excuse me, swing and strike. It's 0 1. Astros with six hits now against Shields. It's been the middle of the order. It's been the five, six, seven guys. Marwin Gonzalez, Evan Gaddis, and Yuli Gurriel doing most of the damage. They have five of the six hits. The other one coming from Josh Reddick on a ball that got past Jose Abreu. Misses it's one and one. Sales first 300 K season. 287 last year. He will be a tough customer for sure, especially in a best of five if he pitches 40% of their game. No, that was my bad. He had 287 coming into that game. Now he's over 300. He had a career high of 274 in 2015. 300 is a huge number. He's actually given up some runs lately. His last half dozen starts have not been his best of the season. And Corey Kluber's numbers have been a little bit better over the year than Chris Sale after those starts. But he's still a dominant lefty with 300 Ks on the year. Fisher down to the count one and two. Marwin thought about advancing, and now everybody going back to their respective bases on the pitch in the dirt. Last start for Shields without allowing a home run. You have to go all the way back to an interleague and interest city matchup against the Cubs. Back on July 27th, he has gone nine straight starts allowing a home run tonight. George Springer came the closest, putting one to the wall and left. Two, two, just missed, and now the count's full. We well, struck out Fisher last time. All that movement by the catcher, he really didn't get himself in a good position to stick that for the veteran, get the call. See if Derek Fisher can do anything. That had a lot of play. See if AJ puts the runners in motion. He will not. And Fisher goes down swinging for the second straight time. Good decision to keep them stationary. And that's two outs in the inning. Five strikeouts for Shields. And that will be the last batter Shields faces. Rick Renteria comes out of the dugout. Grab the ball from his 35 year old right hander. We'll come back and tell you about the new pitcher for the White Sox in this 3 2 game in the sixth inning after this.
Kings are the 1980 Houston Astros. After losing a three-game series to end the season, needing to play an extra game in a one-game playoff against the Dodgers, and Joe Necro and the Astros winning that game 7-1 to one to advance to the postseason. They would have an epic NLCS against the Philadelphia Phillies that year as Joe Necro and the Astros come out to celebrate. 1980, the first division championship, the first of now seven in Astros history. Very cool, Rafael Landestoy. Tommy Lasorda would head in to the Astros clubhouse after that game and congratulate them. Tommy will turn 90 years old on Friday. That's incredible. The color analyst tonight for the Chicago White Sox is Tom Pachorek. He's heading out to L.A. to celebrate with Tommy and the gang over the weekend. That was quite a year for the Astros, 1980, their first postseason appearance. You see the two runners on are Gurriel and Marwin. And the new pitcher for the Chicago White Sox taking over for James Shields is a right-hander, Gregory Infante. Infante in 46 games has thrown 50 innings, and he's punched out 43. That opponent batting average at 238 is pretty good. He comes at you with a fastball around 95 and a half miles an hour. Also has a slider. Curveball and a changeup. And throwing that slider a little more than the curveball as the season has gone along. As he faces Cameron Maven. Maven was 0 for 2 against James Shields tonight. Bats with two on and two outs in a one run game. Starts him off with a slider for a strike. Kind of a tweener there. His slider's usually 86, 87. The curveball's usually 82, 83. That one came in at 84. That might have been the curve. It's one way to keep him guessing. <laughs> there will be some stories going on at that Tommy Lasorda birthday party. Oh boy. I've probably seen Tommy Lasorda speak at a banquet a half dozen times over the years. And I have heard the same stories <laughs> every year. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, uh, it's but it's still good. He's one of those guys that he you can still, tell a story. You still want to hear the story, even if you know exactly every detail, because <laughs> you've heard it on the five previous times you've seen him speak. One one pitch is a swing and a miss. It's one and two. Fonte taking over with a one run deficit. White Sox scored two off Brad Peacock in the fourth. It appears Peacock's night is over as Liriano has continued to loosen up all inning. In the dirt. Two and two the count. Well, Liriano warming up out there. You've got Delmonico, Hansen, and Navarez coming up. All lefties, obviously Garcia out of this ball game, and Alan Hansen in replacement as a left-handed hitter. Garcia left the game with stomach discomfort after one at bat. One two-two pitch has popped up. Abreu backs up, calls off the second baseman Moncada and puts it away. Still three-two. We head to the seventh.
White Sox and pitcher Francisco Liriano in. It's our Toyota time to play. We saw him with a scoreless eighth on Friday night. You've seen six appearances, just one run allowed for him. Liriano's looked really good. Lots of confidence there. He said he needed that outing on Friday. And just to get himself feeling much better now, knowing the team has some confidence in him as well, is, is a good thing. And when you ask him about adjustments that he's made over the season, there's not a ton that he's done. Uh, using that changeup against righties, he's proud of. Maybe, maybe a little more sweep to the slider. But it's not so much what Liriano's doing, it's what the catcher's doing, where the catcher is setting up more towards the middle of the plate. They are trusting his stuff. And now not so many walks for Liriano, and that has been key for him, has become a more dominant reliever. And we'll see where he ends up uh, as this team heads to the postseason, guys. Yeah, that was a dominant inning against the Mariners as he struck out Robinson Cano, Nelson Cruz, and Kyle Seeger in the middle game of that three game series. That was actually that was the first game of the three game series. That was the Friday night game. And there's a called strike. It's 0 and 1. That's about as tough a trio as he will see. In this case, he'll face Nicky Delmonico. Alan Hansen and Omar Narvaez. It's 0 and 2 to Delmonico. You can see the confidence growing a little bit. The release point's been very good for Liriano. You just want to see it continue to grow. That's why AJ Hinch, before he had that good inning against the Seattle Mariners, was facing one hitter at a time. And AJ, I think, kind of narrowed it down, simplified it for him, and said, look, just go get this left handed hitter, and we'll progress from there. But the command coming back a little bit because that was the initial problem is he was unable to throw strikes consistently when he first became an Astro. Now he's getting a little bit better at it, but you want to see that confidence grow and be more consistent with it. Gets a chase there from Delmonico on the slider. And he picks up another strikeout after striking out the side against the Mariners, striking out the first battery faces tonight. But Liriano is also learning to come out of that bullpen again. He doesn't do that a lot in his career. Julia? Yeah, to add what Blummer's saying, uh, that transition back to the bullpen for him, he said he is feeling much better about that. And when you think about it, it was explained to me for a starting pitcher, what is the toughest inning they have? It's that first inning. So if you're trying to get him to, to spot and, and hit the corners, it can be tough that first go round. But for, for Liriano, this way, with him, with the catcher setting it more towards the middle, there's less thinking for him, maybe being a little less fine, letting that stuff work for him. Yeah, his stuff can play. He doesn't have to give the hitters too much credit because, as we have seen him the last few outings, he has been getting some of the best hitters in the American League on swings and misses. He, he faced that one batter in two different outings in Seattle. It was Kyle Seeger both times. And then, as you mentioned, A.J. extending him out last time to face Cano, Cruz, and Seeger. Those outings against the Mariners have kind of turned this season around for Francisco. One and one to Allen Hansen, switch hitter, batting for the first time, right handed. There's a line drive, but speared by Jose Altuve for out number two. Hit hard at the Astros' second baseman. That bullpen we're talking about heading into the postseason. Ken Giles, Devo, Musgrove, and Liriano on there. We also saw yesterday Luke Gregerson and Will Harris pitch very good. And AJ did a good job of giving each of those guys one inning apiece to close out that ball game against the White Sox. But those six should be or have the best possibility to be your bullpen along with one other going into the postseason. Joe Musgrove, one of those guys who started the season as a starter, made the adjustment in the bullpen and got, for me, a whole lot better. Strike call to Narvaez. Omar Narvaez batting with two outs and nobody on. And Musgrove has become a guy that AJ uses in any situation. And tonight, with Giles down, we're not telling any secrets. AJ said in his postgame press conference last night, with Giles down, Musgrove might be the guy to get the save. He's proven out of that bullpen that he has swing and miss type stuff. 1-1 pitch is popped in the air. Marwin drifts back. Playable foul territory. 
And another strong one, two, three inning for Francisco Liriano. This guy has looked great his last few innings. the results from today's Chevy Stroh poll. Thanks for following us on ATT Sportsnet SW on Twitter and voting. How many players should be allowed on an active roster for the playoffs? Let's see here. It's close. Very, very close. All in the 20s here. 26 to 30. That's the winner tonight. 29 percent. Ooh, but not by much. That was interesting. I like it. TK? It was close. Everything getting within 7% of each other. Man, a full 40-man roster in the playoffs? Count me out. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not in that camp either. 3-2 ball game, seventh inning stretch time at Minute Maid Park, deep in the heart of Texas, just concluding. Now George Springer will lead things off. Astros facing Gregory Infante for his first full inning of work. Infante picked up the final out of the sixth inning to leave two runners on in the sixth. First pitch misses down and into George. Springer sent one to the wall and left his last time up. Nicky Delmonico made a nice play against the scoreboard wall and left in front of the Crawford boxes. Breaking ball for a strike. It's one and one. James Shields gave up six hits and four walks in five and two thirds innings. Struck out five, including the last batter he faced. Pitch misses up and into George. It's two and one. We're going to get his pocket schedules. <laughs> They're everywhere. You don't need them now. There's only four games left after tonight. Seriously, a little late to the party. I'll tell you the schedule. Although, if you go by the pocket schedule for this weekend, pocket schedules are everywhere. Don't believe the pocket schedule for this weekend. What? Night game is now a day game, and a day game is now a night game. Yes. I said that at the same time, so everybody will be thoroughly confused. Saturday, originally on the schedule as a night game, is now a day game. Sunday originally on the schedule as a fan appreciation day game is now a fan appreciation night game all because of national TV those guys are good that means Blummer and I and Julia and the rest of our crew on AT&T Sportsnet will have our final home broadcast on Friday night it'll be a that's it big and bright Friday night yeah it is I go out flames and then we'll have all seven for you we think on the road trip. We're still waiting to hear yeah, about that. Rumor has it. There's a call third strike. George almost with the emergency hack knew it was a good pitch and didn't have enough time to spoil it. Wait, what's this about Blummer going down in flames on Friday? Yep. Going down in flames. That's a big night. That's my <laughs> night. 
last home game. That's fan appreciation. Yep, I'm going to be up by no, the train no. shooting up. For us, for us. Oh, our fan we appreciation. We're going to give fan appreciation that day. <laughs> yeah, I'll be up there shooting off the fireworks after the game. <laughs> you in orbit. Yeah, oh, believe that. And you'll be up there on the train tracks, right, Julia? <laughs> Absolutely. We have a pitching change. We'll tell you about the new pitcher when we come back. The Montron Auto Group last night was a 3-1 Astros win. Tonight, not a whole lot of offense either in a 3-2 game. Only one hit allowed by Brad Peacock through six innings. That was a two-run home run by Yoan Mancata. James Shields allowing four walks. Three of those came around to score, including a two-run, two-out, two-strike double by Yuli Gurriel. Marwin Gonzalez has been on base three times, two for two with a walk. Brad Peacock, Plummer, another good night. Six innings of two run one hit baseball. It's been good for Brad Peacock pitching extremely well. It's good to see. New lefty on the mound Jace Fry. Facing Josh Reddick who is hitting 318 against left handed pitching this season. Jace has a fastball around 93 miles an hour cut fastball at 90. Curveball and a change up. So one pitch in the last seven days. One. On the 15th through a one pitch to get him out of that outing. It's been a good pitch. Here's Josh Reddick. Plummer mentioned his numbers against lefties this year at a career best in that department. Renteria has seen Reddick through the years struggle against lefties, but this is a different Josh Reddick this year. That one he tried to hold up and he goes around, says third base umpire Mike Everett, and Josh Reddick is not pleased at all. Yeah, I don't think he went. No. That is a check swing. But now he's down to the count 0 and 2. And the potential for a snap is very high. Instead, he sends one deep to center field. Angle all the way back. He's near the track and he misses the catch. Reddick is going to head to third. Josh is going to get in there. Ball gets away, but Reddick stays at third. Now we can talk to the third base up, Mike Everett, about the check swing he didn't take. It looked like Angle was back in time to make the catch. And we've seen Angle make some very good and very athletic plays in center field, but this is a center cut fastball. And Josh Reddick creates that leverage, swing it down through it, elevates it deep. He didn't even get a glove on that. It's almost a, he didn't reach out far enough to grab that baseball. It had a lot of carry on it off the bat of Josh Reddick. He was waiting for Tal's Hill. <laughs> it wasn't there. For the fans that voted for the 40 man playoff roster, we have another pitching change. Josh Reddick to third base. And we will tell you about the new White Sox pitcher when we come back.
Astro, presented by your local Honda dealer. No, 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 Buns, 17-year Major League career, and everybody knows that Allen Ashby caught three no-hitters. He acquired the nickname of Buns while he was a Toronto Blue Jay. Played with Cleveland and Houston during that 17-year career. Jose Altuve faces Al Albuquerque and bounces one off the shortstop Anderson in the center field. Astros lead it four to two. White Sox haven't played the best defensive game tonight. That one was hard hit, but off of Anderson and the Astros lead by two. Bring that infield in. We talk about how it creates angles for hits, but it also puts the infielder in a tough position sometimes. Not hit hard off the end of the bat for Jose Altuve. But in playing in, it puts Tim Anderson in a tough spot where it's an in-between hop and it ricochets off him into center field for the it did give it a knock. Yep. Gave it a knock and an RBI for Jose Altuve. MVP. <laughs> RBI number 80 for Altuve, who's now caught on first <laughs> base and they throw the ball away. What a defensive inning for the White Sox. Altuve was dead to right off of first base, and Narvaez throws it into right field. Simple game of catch would have had Jose Altuve on that. Altuve got a jump, pretty good jump off Al Albuquerque, but stopped for whatever reason, and eventually it turned into a back pick that turned into a terrible throw by Narvaez. Narvaez could have ran it down there. He could have ran right at Altuve. Altuve was stuck. Wow. Two base error on the White Sox catcher. When you think about extra outs in this inning, Springer struck out to start the inning. And then the fly ball by Reddick was a triple, but it easily could have been caught by Engel for the second out. If that was the case, infield would have been back. Out two base ground ball would have been a routine out. Then he gets on first base. That should have been an out. Instead, there's only one out of the inning. The Astros, in essence, playing with five outs so far. Good teams take advantage of mistakes, and a lot of times you'll see young teams like these Chicago White Sox make mistakes. Albuquerque bounces one in there. It's two and two. Tough inning for Rick Renteria's group. Even prior to this inning, the ball that got past Moncada in the center field for the RBI by Evan Gaddis, the double down the line, got past Jose Abreu off the bat of Josh Reddick. We have seen the Astros take advantage of some less than stellar defense tonight. Correa looking for his first hit, has a full count against Al Albuquerque. Good swing. Correa hit the ball hard his last time up, lining out to right field. you a long run and it's into the crowd. The fan ends up with a baseball. That's a nice gesture. Now two bay fan nonetheless. Two bay trying to score a run from third base with less than two outs and Correa at the plate. Unable to score the run as Anderson makes the play. Correa grounds out with the infield in for the second out. Well, it's been a good night for Marwin Gonzalez. Marwin is two for two in his career against Albuquerque. There is a right handed hitter due on deck in Evan Gaddis. The Astros. Are going to see Marwin Gonzalez get an opportunity to hit here. Marwin.
Now he's been on base all three times. Two hits and a walk. Has that average up to 296. Keep an eye on El Tuve. I would recommend trying to steal home with Marwin up there, but a left-handed hitter, third baseman playing well off third base, and Albuquerque pitching out of the windup. Just saying. Okay. He was creeping down. He's down here in this region on that first pitch. If nothing else, he's in the eye line. Yeah. Of Albuquerque during the windup. Strike called, it's one and one. Marwin tied for the team lead in RBIs with 82. Toward short, Anderson. Makes the play and the Astros are out in the seventh inning. But they had a run on the RBI single by Jose Altuve. They now lead 4-2. As we head to the eighth inning, six innings of one hit baseball from Brad Peacock, a perfect seventh from Francisco Liriano. Now on for the eighth is Luke Gregerson. Saw Luke yesterday, pitched a solid inning, getting two punch outs and nine pitches. 4.40 ERA, 57 and a third innings pitched, leading the way out of that bullpen with his 62nd appearance. Talking to Steve Sparks, the radio analyst. For the Houston Astros, and he said that Luke Gregerson has a unique slider grip to begin with. He made a little bit of an alteration to it before last night's appearance, and it worked out pretty good. Let's see if it works out tonight. Yeah, he was outstanding. He did face Kevin Smith, Adam Engel, and then the top of the order, Yulmer, Yulmer Sanchez, and picked up a couple of strikeouts. Now facing Tim Anderson. Anderson has faced Gregerson three times in his career and struck out all three times. Tonight he's 0 for 2, lined out and bounced into a fielder's choice. Anderson just 24 years old. You look up and down this lineup. You look at him. And the White Sox have eight of nine hitters, 26 years of age or younger, and six of nine, 25 years old or younger. Only Jose Abreu at 30 years old, not in his mid or early 20s, and. Similar to the demographics to the early Astros teams. Yeah, we have experience with this. 13, 14 were some rough years. We saw a lot of mistakes being made. See, the White Sox did a very good job through the draft and through trade to accrue some young talent. 
Their farm system went from not dead last, but very low as far as prospects to one of the best in baseball now with some of the trades they did make. But it was eerily reminiscent to me of some of the teams that we saw in those 13, 14 years where they were losing 100 games and making mistakes where they should be making plays. So it's a bit of a grind. There's a lot of patience to be had, but I think with what the Astros have done under Jeff Luno, I think other teams are taking notice and maybe trying to create their own game plan moving forward. But one of the ways we see it is through draft, some good trades, getting young talent in return, developing them and getting them to the big leagues as a group. And part of it also, and, and you lived through your first couple of years as a broadcaster, is you have to have the fan base buy into it as well. Yeah, and that's a tough sell. Ball pass or off the glove of Luke Gregerson goes for a sliding play and Anderson safe. That was a rocket that hit off the heel of his glove. Yeah, that got him pretty good. Thumb will be barking a little bit on that play. It'll bring out Jeremiah Randall, the head trainer, and AJ Hinch as we watch. The ball jump off the bat of Tim Anderson. Gregerson actually made a pretty athletic play in trying to recover that. Mm. Wow, that just squared up. That didn't touch the glove, did it? No, that was all flesh. Luke, knowing him, is going to want to stay in the game. But well, he's telling AJ, I don't pitch with that hand. <laughs> that is going to get a little sore, you would think, relatively quickly and maybe start to blow up a little bit as they look at his non pitching hand. That's a line drive right off the palm of his hand. Pitch came in at 89.1 miles an hour. Came back at Luke at 102.3 miles an hour. Mm. Yeah, that that is full force right in the palm of that hand. I don't think Jeremiah Randall wants him to continue, and I think Luke's trying to plead his case. <laughs> yeah, there's not much of a conversation right there. I think it's a matter of Luke. Kind of flexing the hand, trying to get the pain and the swelling out of there to see if he can continue. He's shaking it out. Luke Gregerson was ahead of the count. Anderson hits one off the base of his left hand. Did not even touch the glove at over 100 miles an hour. It's going to swell up, you would think. It'd be fun just go back in the clubhouse and stick your hand in a bucket of ice. For those of you who have not done that, it's not fun. Go ahead and try it at home. <laughs> your own ice challenge, ice bucket <laughs> challenge. Well, Luke's going to try and see if he can stay in there. Well, for your viewing pleasure, brought to you by Mattress Firm Supermo Cam. Keep an eye on that left hand, the glove hand. Oh. Luke's going to want to stay in there. That's just his personality. He gives the thumbs up. <laughs> All right, he's going to hang in there. Tying run at the plate in this 4 2 game. The only reason I think that you and I are giggling is because we both know Luke pretty well. We know Jeremiah relatively well. We know AJ pretty well. And it's just those are moments that you want to be on the field and really hear what's going on because you can only imagine what the conversation might be. But it was kind of funny to see AJ just standing there, not saying a word, letting the trainer and the player hash it out. Now Luke will face Matt Davidson. 
Davidson striking out and grounding out. And he sends one the other way foul. Eighth inning baseball. 4 2 game. That was just the second hit of the night for the White Sox. The first one was a two run home run by Yohan Mankata. And the second one, that comebacker that caught Luke Gregerson in the left hand off the bat of Tim Anderson. To our topic there. Nobody in Chicago wanted to see the White Sox trade a Chris Sale to winter meetings, but once they made that determination that they weren't going to be competitive this season, maybe next, time to rebuild. And Sale moved, Adam Eaton moved, moved other pieces this season. Tana. Tana going out. Good slider there. It's one and two. Joe Musgrove warming up in the Astros bullpen in the eighth inning of a two run game. We saw him get a two inning save the other night for the first of his career. Chase that slider. Two and two the count. And again, Tim Anderson just hanging out at first base. Popped high in the air, shallow center field. Cameron Maven. Out number one. Join the Astros behind the scenes at Minute Maid Park with an Astros ballpark tour. The tour lets you check out areas like the broadcast booth, press box, dugout, scoreboard, control room, and more. Visit Astros.com slash tours to book your tour today. Adam Engel was due up, but he will be pinch hit for Rob Brantley. Left hand hitting catcher will pinch it. And with that, Brent Strom, the pitching coach, comes out to talk to Luke Gregerson. Typically, an opportunity to kind of go over that scouting report again. Go over a lot of hitters, especially in September. to hit for Engel. Five or 20 on the year, a couple of RBIs. Pinch hitter, eight opportunities and one hit. California kid went to UC Riverside. There is a breaking ball for a strike. Red Sox won their game tonight, nine to nothing in Baltimore. Chris Sale with eight of those shutout innings, striking out 13 to get to 300 on the season. The Yankees won as well earlier in the day, so the Red Sox still lead the AL East by three games. The Brewers had a chance to 
moving to a tie for the wild card with the Colorado Rockies. They led 4 3 into the bottom of the eighth. Pittsburgh tied it in the eighth and walked it off in the ninth. The Brewers stay one back of the Rockies in the second wild card spot in the NL. And the Cleveland Indians have scored first in Anaheim and lead the Angels 1 0. The Angels, a chance to move within a half a game of the Minnesota Twins, who lost 11 3 today to the Yankees. Outside is three and one. No swing, says Mike Everett. Josh Reddick says that was further than I swung. He's right. Is Mike Everett going without the brace tonight? Got to check. Yep. Braceless. Took a pitch off the right hand last night as a home plate umpire. There's a strike. Counts full. Good pitch, money pitch, and a 3 1 count where the young man's probably looking for a fastball, but he paints that outside corner. Good job by Evan to stick that thing on the outside, get the call. Another score of note the Dodgers who have had a crazy second half of the season have lost for the third straight night in Philadelphia to a team that had 91 losses going into that series. What is going on? It's not going to be good for the confidence. Three and two. There goes Anderson. Swing and a miss. Gaddis throw is not quite in time. Anderson with a stolen base. Brantley strikes out for the second out of the inning and the first strikeout for Luke. Good job by Luke to get that punch out. He knew Anderson eventually was going to be running everything outside. Then eventually that slider down and in gets a swing over the top. Pretty good throw. It was a good throw. He took a little bit longer to get rid of it. But also Luke Gregerson's not one of the quicker guys to home plate. So the combination of both leads to Tim Anderson to get that bag. Luke will leave the game after two thirds of an inning, allowed one hit. Joe Musgrove will come on, try and get the final out of the eighth inning when we come back. Two outs, runner on second base. Luke Gregerson leaves the game and Joe Musgrove comes in. Talked about how well he's done out of that bullpen in 20 games in relief. He is undefeated with a 0.85 whip. 28 punch outs in that 28 and two thirds innings pitch. That's been the biggest thing for me is that Joe's been able to come in 
The fastball's added a couple extra miles an hour. But his put-away pitches got a little bit more crisp out of that bullpen. It's been fun to watch. Picked up a two-inning save in his last outing Saturday against the Seattle Mariners to give the Astros a magic number of one. Luke Gregerson out of the game, and Musgrove will face Yolmer Sanchez. Tim Anderson on second base with two outs. Hard hit, fair ball down the right field line. That'll score a run. Sanchez heading to second base. He's looking at his third base coach, but he'll hold up with an RBI double. Well, Sanchez makes it a one run game. It's four to three. Young teams have a tendency to be aggressive on the fastball. That was a good indication right there by Yolmer Sanchez. Did a good job of pulling his hands in to yank that down the first base line just over the first base bag. Now Musgrove will face Yoan Mancata. Mancata hitting a two run home run earlier in this game, his seventh home run of the season. He is 8 for 16 against the Astros this year. Bounces away from Gaddis, all the way off the screen. Sanchez advances to third on the wild pitch. Looks like a split, he just buried. Not a good pitch by Joe Musgrove. He's going to have to recover right here with the tying run 90 feet away. Grounded foul. It's one and two. Musgrove has never faced Mancata before. 24,995 tonight at Mid Maid Park looking for the final out of the eighth inning. Past the first base coach Darrell Boston in foul territory. It's one and two. For strike three as Musgrove wraps up the eighth. The run scores. The Astros hold a one run lead.
game. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. This is for you, TK. Why don't you drink in some triple highlights from 2015 for Bulldog B. Head down, looking for the three bags out of the box. Truck it. That was a TV slide. He really didn't need to do that. Oh, a lot of these at home. At home, he could smell them too. Stand up triple. He did this 11 times. 11 in one season. And it looked easy too. Nice work. Evan Gaddis. Still looking for his first triple since. This wouldn't be a bad time as he leads off the bottom half of the eighth inning. To face a new White Sox pitcher. They have gone to multiple relievers in this game. It's Juan Manaya's turn. Juan Manaya, 35th appearance on the season, 37 and two-thirds innings pitched, high ERA, whip creeping towards that 1.4. See in the last five games, not been kind to him. 500 batting average against. Throws 94 miles an hour. Also has a slider, curveball, and a changeup. Astros lead by one, trying to tack on a run or two. With Evan Gannis, Yuli Gurriel, and Derek Fisher do up. Foul ball off the mask of Narvaez. Outfield alignment shifts as Alan Hansen moves from right field to center field. Reimer Liriano takes over in right. Adam Engel pinch hit four is out of the game. Naya misses outside. It's one and one. That's your favorite stat, isn't it? I want to see one live, Evan. <laughs> you want proof? I want proof this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Popped up. Who wants it? It's near the mound, and Abreu finally makes the basket catch. <laughs> This is a night of less than the best defense from the White Sox, and Abreu, who's holding his neck, came in at the last second for a basket catch. Well, you know who didn't want it? There's a guy pointing at it. With a big right handed hitter up, the third baseman is usually playing pretty deep. But Jose Abreu looking towards the sky, eventually calling it and going Willie Mays Hayes on it. One out. That'll bring up Yuli Gurriel. Yuli with a base hit into right field. He is three for four. And on his quest to hit 300 for the season, he is doing some damage tonight with three consecutive hits. I'll tell you what, you talked about Marwin and Yuli, and both of them have stepped up today. Rocket going the other way. 95 right down the middle, not trying to do too much. Marwin and Yuli, a combined five for seven tonight. Marwin batting 296, Yuli up to 298. They both move their batting average up three points. Here's Derek Fisher looking for his first hit tonight. Takes a called strike. Fisher did face Manaya in Chicago and struck out. Manaya's Highest strikeout percentage of all the White Sox relievers. Ahead of Fisher here, 0 and 2. There is absolutely nobody warming up in the Astros bullpen. So AJ Hinch is going to look to Joe Musgrove for a four out save tonight. Wanted to rest Ken Giles after his 30 second save in last night's game. 2 
pitch doesn't miss by much. It's one and two. Musgrove will have to go through the middle of the White Sox order in the ninth. Jose Abreu, Nicky Delmonico, and Alan Hansen, who is in for Avisiel Garcia. Bounces in there. Angels tied up that game against the Indians. They're knotted at one. Cleveland has won 25 of the last 26 games and still with just a game and a half lead over the Astros for the best record in the AL. 25 and 1. It seems like they never lose on the road. It's kind of arrogant. Swing and a miss. Fisher goes down. During that stretch of 26 games, the Indians have not allowed more than four runs in any of those games. Their pitching has just been lights out. Pitching has been lights out. We knew that going in. We saw it a little bit last year. They weren't healthy and still got deep into the playoffs going. Game, what was it game seven of the World Series? Yep. But if they're healthy and they're firing, your offense really doesn't have to do that much. They still could have been World Series champs. I think that rain delay took all the momentum away from them. It really did. And right down to the wire against the Chicago Cubs. It's 1 0 to Cameron Maven. Well, if the Angels win, they're a half game back in the wild card. And if the Angels win, the Indians are just a half game ahead of the Astros. If the Astros win tonight, 2 0 the count. Give Rick Renteria's group some credit though. They have played the Astros as well as almost anybody other than the Indians all year. The White Sox team has been tough on Houston. Yes, they have. Maven pops up the 2 0 pitch in the center field. Hansen puts it away. We head to the ninth in a one run game. Astros leading four to three. Sportsnet is presented by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Joe Musgrove stays in the game looking for a four out save tonight. He'll have a new battery made for the ninth inning. Playing for the first time since September 9th when he had to leave the game with Concussion symptoms. Juan Centeno is behind the plate. AJ Hinch said before the game he wanted to get Juan into a game soon. Well, soon became the ninth inning of tonight's game. Musgrove. Nothing like a one run game to get your mind back in it, huh? Right? Just throw him right back in the fire. Oof. Obviously, he wants 
Centeno if anybody gets on base to be able to control the running game. You can't replicate playoff situations during the regular season, but you can have something similar to it. And this is, might be something similar to what AJ's looking for. Musgrove ahead 0 and 2. Centeno and Stassi going head to head for probably that third catcher spot. On the hands, Yuli will flip it to Musgrove, and Joe covers nicely to get the first out of the ninth inning after getting ahead 0 and 2. We talked about it earlier that third catcher is definitely going to be a viable spot for the Astros in the postseason with the ability to pinch run, or in this case, go to a Centeno or a Stassi for that matter, because they bring some solid defense off the bench. They do bring some solid defense. They can both throw pretty well. You can get help calling games. We've seen him work, seen him work with the quarterback wristband. It's also interesting too. We talk about matchups, whether it be the Boston Red Sox, Yankees, Cleveland Indians, Centeno, a left-handed hitter, Stassi, a right-handed hitter. Does that matter? You can alter your roster series to series. Musgrove really worked hard to keep that ball in fair territory as he busted it off the mound and just got there a split second late. The moose was moving. He was. Striding it out. Long stride. This goes for a foul ball, but that's good hustle right there. Veteran move by a young catcher in Centeno, too. Joe covered the first base on that previous ground ball there. He's trying, sprints off the mound to try and get the ground ball. Centeno goes out, give him a little bit of a breather, calm him down. On the ground over Musgrove's head. In comes Correa, and he can't quite make the play in time. Delmonico beats out the slow chopper. That was a tough spot for everybody involved. Just perfectly placed. You can't do anything about it. He made a good pitch and blew up Delmonico. Just a little bit of a number. It's tough for those tall guys, six foot four shortstop. To go down that far to pick up a ground ball and try and throw on a run back across their body. Now Musgrove will face Allen Hansen. Hansen came on for Abasail Garcia, who left the game and has struck out and lined out in a couple of at bats. Musgrove prior to Saturday had one professional save in the minor leagues. Came at Corpus Christi two years ago. Shatters the bat. Uli backhand throws to short for one. The return. Great stop by Musgrove. That ball could have headed towards the dugout. And Joe somehow picked it on a hop and kept the runner at first base. Joe's been all over the place. That was incredibly athletic. Surprisingly. But out first of all, great decision by Yuli just going with the baseball and getting that lead out. But the sprawling backhanded pick by Joe Musgrove to try and complete that double play was pretty impressive. Not too sure Correa had the greatest of grips. That was a heck of a lot closer than I thought it was. That was a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous play. He almost kept the foot on the bag. Joe has gone through more work in this inning than, mo than most pitchers' fielding practices in a regular spring day. Really has. He has. <laughs> Swing and a miss to Narvaez. Omar Narvaez, the batter. Fans standing now with two outs in the ninth inning. Joe looking for his second save in the last four games and also his second as a major leaguer. Had a six out save on Saturday looking for a four out save tonight. Ahead 0 and 2. 
There is one thing you know about Joe Musgrove coming out of the bullpen. He will throw strikes. Yes. He's been a strike thrower all season long. But he sees two strike counts is where he's been more effective out of the bullpen than he was as a starter. 13 out of 15 pitches tonight are strikes. Excuse me, swing. That's a foul ball. Musgrove trying to close this game out for Brad Peacock, who went six innings of one hit baseball. Runner on the move. Centeno's going to throw down. He kind of hesitated and then decided to throw. And Hanson is safe with a stolen base. Yeah, that was interesting. He almost looked like he had no intention and then from his knees fired a laser. Kind of risky. See right here, he's kind of not sure what the hesitation is for. Just missed the corner, two and two. Stayed off. Good battle for Musgrove in the ninth inning. Infield hit. He's had to cover the base. A couple of times. So try to make a fielding play on a chopper up the line. He has been off the mound as an extra fielder on numerous occasions in the night. He got him. Astros win. Four to three. Nine straight home wins. And they are five and zero oh on this homestand.